Oftentimes, it's what you experience, what you encounter, what you see, and who you spend it with that makes the journey the adventure of a lifetime. It isn't about the rig you built, it isn't about whether you're car camping or overlanding, it's all about getting out there and enjoying the world around you. In this short video series, you will follow along our attempt to overland California, the terrain and weather conditions we had to tackle, and the car issues we encountered along the way. This is Mark, and you're watching The Rooted Progress. What is up, you guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's Mark again from The Rooted Progress, and I'm with Vanessa, my wife, again. Hi. We're here in Joshua Tree National Park to do some wheeling and some overlanding, so we're really excited to take you guys along for the adventure. Uh, today kind of officially starts my overland birthday week slash like adventure trip. So we get to take you guys along for the ride. It's going to be very interesting. There's tons of wind right now. We'll get to see how the rooftop tent does in the wind. I think it's going to be A-OK. -okay. Thanks again to Subi Works for prepping us right before our trip. We got all our maintenance done. so. We are A-OK, -okay. we should be ready to go without any issues whatsoever. You know, you never know, you gotta be prepared, but we're pretty excited and yeah, let's start our adventure. abandoned mine uh, there's definitely a pretty moderate to hard um, rocky section right before you get up um, thankfully uh, our Subaru has the torque masters rear diff locker and then we also have a transmission cooler because of our approach departure angles we had to pick a couple difficult lines but the torque locker helped out a lot so uh, it's been doing really well um, wasn't too bad and we're moseying up the trail I think it's just crazy that there was freaking mines out here in the middle of the desert and it's already difficult just trying to get out here in a modern vehicle and I can't even imagine what uh, they used to do back in the day just to come out to the mine so it's just it's really cool and interesting to see what other people were doing back in the day. After the mine there is a short series of ledges you have to climb. We needed to throttle through these ledges one at a time to mitigate risk of breaking anything. This is what I like to call controlled momentum. Subarus do not have the crawl ratio you need, however sending it does not apply here since there are multiple ledges. But take it easy and climb each step at a time and you'll be fine. and this might be one of the hardest obstacles on this trail. So we're just gonna take a look at it on foot and pick a line. Whenever you come across a sketchy obstacle with pre-existing piled rocks, it is always good to walk outside the car to find your lines. You can step on the loose rocks to see how stable they are. Pre-existing piled rocks do not always make obstacles easy. When you have a larger and heavier vehicle, the rock pile can crumble and put you in a difficult situation. These rocks were already here when we got to this place, so we decided not to move them. Also, piled rocks can help in certain situations as stepping stones. 
especially if you don't have enough approach angle to clear the obstacle to place your wheels. The easier line is definitely to the right side as Vanessa points out, but since we have the torque locker we wanted to test it out as the rear diff locker would be beneficial in these situations. All right guys, so we're near the end of the trail, uh, Old Dale Road. We're gonna head out to the Joshua Tree Campground. No, where are we heading? <laughs> we are heading to Joshua, Tr Joshua Tree BLM. Yes, so that is where we're gonna go find a uh, dispersed camping. Although this area that we are right now, um, there are dispersed campsites, but I don't know, we, we're just gonna, we originally had it planned out to camp out over there, but if you would like to, you can camp out here as well. Uh, it's pretty easy on this side of the trail for coming from the northern side. It was definitely more difficult <laughs> earlier on, um, so I would definitely say uh, be prepared for that. But yeah, overall, so far, so good. Next, we'll show you our campsite. All right, guys, so we made it to the campground area. It's a BLM dispersed camp camping uh, for Joshua Tree. Uh, it's pretty wide open space. It looks freaking awesome. Um, I mean, there's there's not that much around. <laughs> uh, no features of the land besides all this dirt and dust. Like, it's getting crazy. So I don't even know, should we camp here or should we just like I don't know, but look. Oh that my dust gosh. Cloud. That dust cloud. As long as as long as we're not in that, I think we'll be okay. I know our rooftop tent should be able to handle this wind. It's just right now got Mother Gaia is going too hard right now. It's so windy. <laughs> it says it's like 30 it's, mile per hour winds uh, is the 20, highest. 28 to 32 miles per hour at this time. This is like the highest speed for the oh, wind right go. now oh yeah there it goes glad we're in the car right now shoot yeah don't want to go outside not yeah. yet but it's supposed to die down but this is apparently the strongest this week so yay <laughs> yeah we just had to pick the day where it was going to be the strongest wind just because we had to stay on our adventure schedule and we're we just came out here to see what the heck would happen and wow. 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 Look at Mark. <laughs> Look at his jacket. <laughs> he can't even. He's gonna fly away. I don't think his jacket's uh, breaking any wind anymore. <laughs> Get that shot, Mark. Get that shot, Mark. What are you doing? I'm trying to get the beauty shots, dude. You're crazy. It's freaking cold, dude. You're so crazy. Oh. One hour later. What are we doing, babe? We have to make a decision soon. We have to make a decision. The wind, the wind has not stopped. We waited. We waited at least an and hour, just like chilling. <laughs> out of nowhere, out of nowhere, these clouds start rolling in. These giant clouds. So, look at those. Luckily, we got reception here. Surprisingly. And um, this is what it says today: fifty percent chance, I, I believe. Yeah, fifty percent. Yeah. Oh, it's right here. Humidity. I don't know if you guys can see that. I think it says fifty percent chance. Of rain. Oh man. I don't think. I think we can do it. I don't know if I just want to right now. <laughs> I got I got two more weeks of adventure. This is the first day. <laughs> Yo, I said dirty 30, but dang. They look heavy. They look heavy, but they're going away. If the wind blows hard enough. If the wind blows hard enough, <laughs> it will blow them away and or blow them here and then it will rain on us if i have to poop in the middle of the night when it's raining that's gonna suck because it's <laughs> gonna be muddy i mean it will be easier to dig a hole out here but it will be muddy and i won't be able to tell what's my poop or where my poop is and i'm not sure if i want to bring that into the rooftop tent i 
I also don't like so another thing now that he mentioned that um, realities of overlanding so he he bought a like pop-up poop tent and we couldn't even set it up because of the wind because of the wind and our last campsite and I'm like kind of nervous because it's probably gonna be super windy at night we check we actually checked the wind this time we checked the wind we knew there was wind there was no um, possibility of rain at the time when we checked yesterday and then yeah there's there's rain in the forecast now whoop de doo Ooh. I think you should experience it you always say I want to experience things but I don't think you actually want to experience things because you would experience it if you wanted to experience things I don't know what you're talking about <laughs> meaning you should yeah. experience things so well. <laughs> I think I know exactly what she's talking about I guess we gotta experience things <laughs> I guess we do. Okay, so uh, we decided and we are in the tent and it is now raining. It just started raining. Yeah, so oh. hopefully it doesn't get any worse, um, but it can only get better, right? So since it's very cold here, we wanted to make sure we are packed warm. Besides our sleeping bag, uh, we also got the synthetic down blankets, one each for each of us. And this is supposed to keep us rather warm inside our sleeping bag because it is cold and raining. And besides that, we got our heated blankets and we were kind of bummed when we first got it because we realized that the heated blanket you had to plug it in and we didn't have a power station at the time but it worked out at home so to keep us warm we got our power station and we're gonna plug it in and you know stay warm all night stay warm all night so we'll let you know how it goes we ended up not being able to set up our typical cookware um, we don't plan on cooking in here so I'm just gonna snack it out and um, hopefully tomorrow we can actually uh, show you guys uh, some of the food that we brought to eat. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Freaking looks awesome. <laughs> okay. No. She's like wrapped up in the heated blanket. She's like loving it. Don't she don't want to move. But we gotta set up. It's already 7:30. All right, guys. So we obviously survived the night. The rooftop tent held up really well against the winds, and no leaks with the random sprinkle of rain and showering of rain last night. So yeah. Um, we survived, it was freaking cold, and we're loving our heated blanket with the portable power station <laughs> setup. That was awesome. And also our synthetic down blankets really, really kept us warm. So yeah, this is what it all looks like right now. It is about 7.30, almost 8 o'clock. And yeah, we're just going to turn the car around here to the other side of this bush so that we can position the solar panels to the sun a little bit better and our whole setup will be nice and tight set up the camping stove set up the cookware and everything and our little privacy pooper tent hi guys i'm finally up and ready for the day <laughs> <laughs> while she was in the rooftop tent i was setting up our campsite so let's go ahead and give you guys a little quick tour uh, we mentioned our coleman stove in the last video uh, but our newest addition is the Coleman water jug. I think it was like five gallons water jug. And then we also got this table, all of it from Walmart. <laughs> Basically, this is, a, this is a whole Walmart setup. Affordable because why not? Why not? Walmart has so many things. Just get it there. Um, no, to be honest, we were like, oh, dude, we need this. We need that. And then we're like, let's go to Walmart. And yeah. then there, there you go. They and have it. We also got this at Walmart. Which oh, we got that at Walmart. Yep. Yeah, pop up sink. Um, that is really nice, though, because this has like a little drain plug. So yeah, you so can you plug like it. Pour it out. You can plug it and or you can completely open it up. 
So I think that's a really neat feature that I didn't really expect from a Walmart brand. But, yo, it's super tight. And it fits nice and snug on our little um, stackable boxes, which... Where'd you get the boxes again? I got the boxes from uh, Home Depot. They are pretty sturdy. I like these, uh, these hand clips right here. The clasps, with whatever you may call it. They are nice and crisp. It has a nice little rubber seal up on the top too here. So yeah, we, we store like our dry foods in here. And nice, compact. Doesn't really move around much because they're nice and stackable. Made in the USA, that's always a good thing, right guys? Yeah, and then next we have this easy sink. This is a nice portable sink by Easy Sink. Go, you can follow uh, them on Facebook and Instagram. <laughs> I follow them on Instagram because I don't use Facebook as much. But yeah, this is really cool. Um, basically, you fill this all up with water. It has a soap pump. And this soap pump is nice because it's all, like I guess, aluminum or metal. So it's not plastic. So that's nice. I was thinking it's going to be like more of like a trickle shower. Yeah. But no, it actually sprays. Yeah, but not like... We don't know the actual like <laughs> pressure it is, but it, it's good enough. It's good enough for us. Well, we'll show you guys a clip later of like how strong it is. Yep. Yeah. And then we have this. I don't know if we've ever showed it. The tree bag. Uh, this is where we keep all our kitchen stuff, actually. Yeah. Um, so we have our top ramen. We have some of our um, our cookware yeah. and our plates. They're in this bag right here. So yeah, extra baby wipes because we always need those. Yep. And we got another uh, little box for medium-sized box for additional storage. So, yeah, we have our propane tanks in there for the Coleman grill, and then we have our trash bags, some other things, and then this, yeah, this guy. What is it, Beb? Pop-up tent. It's a pop-up tent for what? For pooping. For pooping, because <laughs> your boy needs to poop. And look, and at, look around us. Is there a place to hide? <laughs> There's absolutely no place to hide. You, you can't even, you can't even dig yourself a hole to conceal yourself. Like, no. <laughs> yeah. So, we couldn't have this set up last night uh, because it was so windy, and that's kind of one of the downfalls of this um, whole overland setup is that when it's windy and raining, it kind of sucks. It's kind of hard to like come back out of the tent, do your business and do it in here without this flying away or getting muddy or something like that, you know? Cause this one doesn't come with a bottom. So it doesn't come with the bottom here. So if it's raining, you're just gonna be pooping in mud. And that's our little commode that we got. We got little trash bags that we're gonna line it with and then you just kind of poop in it. And then our poo poo storage bin so that we don't have to smell it. We got the kitty litter right next door on top of that lid in that Walmart bag. And that's gonna keep it smelling fresh until we can get back to civilization and dump it off. So yeah, that's kind of our new stuff that we got, guys. Um, hope that helps some of your guys' overlanding adventures. And if there's anything that we're missing, let us know in the comments below because I'd like to know. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're... We're still learning as we go, so Absolutely. if you know anything that you think we're missing, let us know. All right, let's get cooking. away in the car all we gotta do is put the rooftop tent down it's not gonna take very long and then we're gonna hit up Joshua Tree to explore a little bit more before our Airbnb tonight the reason why we have an Airbnb tonight is because I actually have a virtual meeting that I need Wi-Fi for and there's not really that much Wi-Fi surprisingly we had internet access here but just to be safe uh, we decided to reserve an Airbnb and so we're gonna go 
Bye. We learned a lot from this trip and hope these experiences help you figure out what you may or may not need. The journey isn't stopping here guys, so as always, keep on trekking. In the next video, we take on snow in the lower Sierra Nevada mountains. With us being the only people on the mountain, we are hoping everything will be alright. <laughs>